Yeah, thank you, Cole, for the introduction and the invitation to present. I will be discussing transgene control systems during IPS differentiation with a focus on how to generate allogeneic CAR T cells. And this will cover work from my postdoc at the University of Toronto, as well as more recent work um, conducted at Notch Therapeutics. So allogeneic iPS-derived uh, CAR T-cells is a cell-based therapy where cells are taken um, from a healthy donor, reprogrammed into induced pluripotent stem cells, or so-called iPS, which are then genetically modified with a CAR and additional edits that help prevent host rejections. Those cells are then differentiated into more mature T-cells and transplanted into patients to target and kill tumor cells. So this strategy really offers a way to produce genetically homogeneous cell products that can be scaled uh, for an immediate off-the-shelf supply at relatively low cost. And I'm really highlighting uh, the middle part of that whole procedure here and the key technologies that have been developed at NOSH Therapeutics on one side that includes involves our IPS editing platform and clone generation platform on the other side that uh, involves our 3D engineer time niche manufacturing platform to differentiate IPS into T cells in a scalable uh, manner. And <clears throat> to uh, generate these allogeneic CAR T products, we need to conduct multiple genetic manipulations. And here on the left, you really see an example of Notch's prototype cell products that requires um, four knockouts and uh, knock-in of four different transgenes. And I'm not going through all those specific edits, but I want to highlight that all these different transgenes are very specific function at the end stage of our product. And um, because they have specific function, they need to be regulated specifically throughout differentiation. And here on the right side, you see some mode of actions. There are certain transgenes that can't just be expressed throughout differentiation um, um, as long as they're expressed at our end stage um, in product cells. Other transgenes benefit from a transient silencing throughout the differentiation process. And there is a third kind of transgene that need a very stringent repression throughout our differentiation process and only expressed at our um, uh, end stage expanded CAR T cells to to allow successful production. <clears throat> now I'm going back a few years. Um, there was a long time before we were thinking about IPS derived CAR T cells, but we have been thinking uh, about general ways how we can control transgene dynamics and dose during differentiation using so-called microRNA-based logic gene circuits. And these gene circuits really make use of the fact that microRNAs are differentially expressed throughout the cell differentiation process as the cells change their state and phenotypes. So such circuits have been developed previously for other applications and are designed to recognize a specific set of microRNAs that serve as an input and um, our, these inputs are integrated in an and-like logic function to produ produce and control a desired output protein that would be our transgene in that case. Um, and you can imagine, for example, to generate a circuit that would detect a specific set of microRNA um, in the pluripotent stem cell state and would um, express the transgene on in that stage and then silence the expression as the cells um, pass through the differentiation. Or you could imagine um, another way how to use these circuits and use them for the opposite control scenario where you want to have um, the transgene repressed in the pluripotent stem cell and it turns on only later during differentiation. And uh, to show that as a proof of principle, we set up a, a study where we wanted to, to show uh, the performance of these circuits in human pluripotent stem cells and came up with a design that is based on a bow tie architect architecture that decouples our input processing that recognizes multiple mic microRNAs from an output module that controls multiple um, 
um, genes. And it really uses these distinct um, core inventions that have been shown previously, where the sensor modules uh, uses four complementary repeats of microRNA targets that can be placed of any uh, sensor element or transgenes to achieve full repression of the downstream transgenes. Um, for the input processing module and for the output module, we ha have made use of a very neat um, library of microRNA that is based on endogenous microRNA variants that can fine-tune the expression depending on, on the mutated variant you're plugging in downstream of your tra uh, transgene. So uh, coupling these uh, technologies together and using automated um, tools for circuit design and micro identification, um, we identified a profile from published micro seq data that specifically um, detects micro RNAs in the pluripotent stem cells and discriminates pluripotent stem cells from differentiated cells. And here um, you see the three microRNAs that have been identified and used to create these kind of complex gene circuits um, using a model-guided combinatorial screening approach. And after a few years later, we could uh, eventually demonstrate that we can specifically induce expression only in pluripotent stem cells, but not in other cell types that don't have this matching microRNA profile. And not just that, we could show that we can fine tune the output um, transgenes that was in this case a fluorescent reporter, depending on the microRNA target library that we have been using. And we could not do that only with one output, we could also uh, control two different fluorescent proteins uh, individually and combinatorially using that approach. So we went one step further and um, employed these circuits to not just control fluorescent reporters, but also a functional molecules. And we chose BMP4, uh, which is a morphogen that is crucial for the spatial organization and early induction of endoderm, mesoderm, and ectoderm in IPS and during the developing embryo. And um, using the circuit, we could show that we can turn um, off the BMP production uh, which resulted in a phenotype of our IPS that uh, was mostly expressing only SOX2, or we could turn on BMP, um, uh, which changed the, the phenotype and induced the in differentiation of the IPS in the tree term la layer and mostly expressed uh, TBXT and SOX2 endoderm and mesoderm. Mark that are specific for endoderm and mesoderms. So, and we also employed the fine tuning library to show that we can tune BMP4 dosing and with the tuning of BMP4 we saw like a gradual decrease of SOX2 and increase of the endoderm and mesoderm marker SOX17 and TBXT. <clears throat> so it is very exciting churning to develop these circuits and um, because these the circuits have this universality they have it in theory different applications that they can be used for. Um, but the question I think for today is, are these circuits ready to be applied for the dynamic dose control of transgene to create IPS-derived allogeneic CAR T cells? And the uh, answer to the question is definitely no, because the, the implementations we have um, created were um, proof of concept implementation that were used transient plasmate and multi-copy um, setups um, that are not suitable to generate allogeneic CAR T cells. So there were two main challenges that needed to be overcome to apply such circuits um, to control transgenes throughout the differentiation. Um, and the first ch challenge is to integrate mo multiple transgenes into the IPS genome, and the second challenge to maintain predictive function of every transition throughout differentiation. And with that, I'm um, moving over to some more recent work that we conducted at Notch, therapeutics that cover both these aspects and challenges and overcome those aspects as, and challenges or with uh, basic technologies that we need to drive, move IPS-derived uh, CAR T, T cells forward. 
So um, <clears throat> I'm highlighting here Nord's IPS gene editing platform that is using uh, MAT7 nuclease, which is a class two type five nuclease. And at the time when we started developing this platform, it was really not very well known and had very poor editing efficiency. And there has been a lot of effort and extensive multi-parameter optimizations being conducted to increase our editing efficiency in IPS. And by today, we routinely achieve above 70% editing across multiple clinical tar targets with IPS edit, um, with MAT7, sorry. And uh, we also have developed a multi multiplex editing approach. So we cannot just edit one target at a time. We can edit multiple targets at a time. And we figured out a method that retains the editing efficiency of each target as we multiplex. This is in contrast to other methods where multiplex, through multiplex editing, you lose typically efficiency. And also you uh, increase the translocation events that is undetectable in our platform. And then more importantly, it tied to, back to the importance of transgene integration and regulation. We have developed protocols to efficiently integrate our transgenes into IPS at desired, lo uh, at desired loci with uh, MAT7. And um, we have identified a set of molecules that could largely increase our targeted integration efficiencies. And by today, we have like a more than 40% integration at desired target size for multiple transgenes um, with our developed protocols. <clears throat> and now coupling all these editing protocol with uh, high throughput cell depositions and clone selection strategies using DDPCR, we make routinely clones um, in a time frame of four to six weeks. And um, it has become very efficient in the last year or so and is really like the uh for us the uh, great opportunity to make these more complex ips drive car car t cells <clears throat> however um the main challenge that we observed as we started integrating transgene into the genome even if we have the most efficient protocol to do that um, there are various things that need to be understood and to be overcome. And that brings me to my third part of the talk um, and uh, looking into ways how we address these challenges. So one challenge that we observed was transient silencing, um, open integration at the locus. And the second challenge was that the transient would interfere with our differentiation trajectory. And I just give here an example. It was one of our very first genes we integrated at a certain integration site with uh, some exogenous promoter. And there was one car molecule that expressed just fine through IPS and IPS clone production I had a bit of reduction in differentiation and then came up beautifully. And it was exactly the expression profile that we wanted. But then we integrated exactly uh, another car design that had exact same uh, design um, configuration, which means it went into the exact same locus, had exact same promoter, it just had different nucleotide sequence in the coding region. And that um, transition got completely silenced very early on at IP stage, it never came off again, uh, on again. So which obviously is a huge problem to generate um, allogeneic IPS drive CAR T cells. So to overcome that problem, we set up a screening approach and um, designed and tested a, a huge combination of uh, integration sites and ex exogenous promoters and um, uh, made uh, various clones in total 17 different combinations and which involve several thousand clone screening and several hundred clone bankings and multiple uh, uh, differentiations of all these clones. And at the end, we identified four designs that met our criteria and didn't got silenced during differentiation um, or had this partial drop in, in, in expression and then came on beautiful at the end stage. Or there were other designs that were completely highly expressed throughout, throughout the differentiation. And at the end stage in our IPS derived um, uh, CD8 T cells, we, we can see a distinct expression profile 
depending where we place that transgene into the uh, genome and what promoter we use. So that gave us really a way to uh, have a, a bit of a library of promoters and integration sites to combine our um, transgene in, uh, into our product. And then I want to highlight our second um, challenge that we had to overcome. There was like the, the fact that certain transgenes in interfered with our differentiation trajectory. So we had this one scenario where we integrated a transgene um, and it came on, the expression came on very early during differentiation at this CD24 stage and it completely um, skewed uh, the differentiated into another lineage. Um, we had suddenly a lot of myeloid cells coming up instead of the lymphoid cells that we wanted to see. Then we had another design that, where we could delay the expression substantially to a later stage, and uh, it, it moved ourselves through the light, right lineage that we wanted, but we still could see like differences in the end-stage phenotype, which eventually affected our um, in vitro um, functionality in terms of con uh, controlling tumors. So um, to overcome that, we started a similar screening approach, this time with more like a synthetic promoters, that are tissue-specific promoters, and integration sites that are specifically uh, expressing gene at a very late stage in our differentiation platform and could eventually identify one combination of uh, promoter integration site that successfully delayed the production of that tricky transgene to the very end stage that allowed us to express, um, <clears throat> to produce um, iPS-derived CAR T-cells with the exact phenotype we wanted and with the function that, that we ex expected to see. And as we move forward, we combined all these design uh, criteria, promoter integration site with the different transgenes, and we found a configuration that could retain the expected transgene expression through differentiation, allowed us um, to have um, very good yield in expansion during the ex differentiation ex um, process and after uh, expansion and showed the expected phenotype that we, we wanted to see at the end stage of our cells, and more importantly, they were able to control tumors in vitro. In vitro. So this um, has been a very huge undertaking of the entire company, and um, um, as, as, as I highlighted, um, using different promoters and integration sites is a way to control transgene dynamics and also dose. But it's also a requirement if you think of moving forward a more uh, complex gene circuit like the microRNA-based gene circuits that I've introduced, because now we have these sites that are well characterized in a certain differentiation platform that we could use to integrate our transgene, uh, our synthetic gene circuit components to um, increase or employ more sophisticated control network um, uh, for future uh, IPS-derived cell product generation. And with that, I want to end my talk. I'm, hope I'm not too much over time. And I want to thank uh, the entire Notch Therapeutics team, in particular protein and cell engineering team, Justin, Zara, Dylan, Dorini and also, uh, but the entire company, there was huge efforts of all the teams at Notch Therapeutics. And I also want to thank all the collaborators of my postdoctoral work on making the circuits, um, microRNA based logic circuits possible in pluripotent stem cells. Uh, highlighting Yale Michaels, who, who developed the uh, uh, microRNA fine tuners and uh, very talented. At, um, undergrad students like Charles, Diana, uh, Diana, and Esther. And with that, I'm happy to take questions. <laughs>